Michigan Central Station. No longer a train station, unfortunately. Now, home to the Ford Motor Company. They paid a great deal of money to restore this building, this beautiful, iconic building. Welcome to Guest Adventures, where everyone's a guest, including me. The grounds in front of the station were also refurbished and cleaned up and replanted. It's Roosevelt Park. That leads up to the station itself. There's park benches so you can sit and relax, enjoy the atmosphere. Very nicely done. They have the old iconic light stands as well. And something interesting in front of the station. If you want to have a little barbecue, they have that set up for you. There's a nice shot looking straight on. We're going to be taking a tour inside the building shortly and see what they've done inside. Going behind the uh, train station, there still is the uh, main line for Canadian National. No more passenger train stop here. The last to stop here was Amtrak. And they no longer use this station. Off in the distance is the train tunnel to Canada. Uh, it's a double main line through the tunnel, but you'll notice that the left side has been enlarged, the right side has not. They don't use the right side anymore. They just use the one because it would cost too much to enlarge both tunnel portals. But with intermodal and car carriers, they had to enlarge the tunnel. All around the station, they've refurbished a lot made Detroit look great. They're calling that the Southwest Greenway. And off in the distance is the Ambassador Bridge. And this is a parking garage. But look at the unique mural that they put on the outside. This is the Bagley Hub parking garage. On the side of the Bagley Hub parking garage. There's an interesting mural about the development of this area with the Michigan Central Station, the book depository, everything being refurbished. Here's a thing about an artist who wrapped the towers depicting the major bodies of water in Michigan, including the Great Lakes and the Detroit River, on each of three 40-foot water cisterns along the Southwest Greenway. And here are the towers that he actually wrapped on the side of the Bagley Hub parking garage. Uh, look at the back side of the train station that was facing the Passenger tracks that are no longer there. From this view, you can see the land in, behind the station where the passenger tracks used to be. Looks like they're going to develop that into something else. But since the tracks have been long gone, they've used the area around it to already build various roads. And so it's not quite the same as it was back in the 70s and earlier. The website said it opened at 9 a.m. They said it opened at 10 a.m. once we got here. So we're gonna wait. So while we're waiting for the station to open up, we're gonna take a look around the area a little bit more. 
And in Roseville Park, there is that artwork. With the man swirling around. Not sure what it represents. Let's see if there's a uh, some kind of a tag on it. It's the base. I don't see anything. So you just have to guess what you think it is and what it symbolizes. Put some comments down below if you think you know what that means. Got some little footprints in the cement. Walked all the way across to destinations unknown. Maybe he's living inside the train station. With the station off in the distance, the Cork and Gable restaurant is located just outside of it with this very cool old caboose is guarding their parking lot. And the restaurant is right there. So we decided it looks like modeled after train station and you notice the uh, clock tower to the left of the clock tower there's the winding key sticking out and look at this gate that is very cool made from car parts The O is a chain. So I got some gears and a wrench, chain link. There's a more chain, a top, and a wrench to loosen lug nuts. Whoever came up with this idea, very, very clever. And we have a band. We can't get into the actual area because they're closed at the moment but uh, that's made from chains and car parts as well and that's very cool and you got the restaurant the tables down there are the same way even the entrance sign to the restaurant out of the parking lot is made out of some various parts. We got horseshoes here, a handle from something, another wrench. Here we got some railroad spikes, some rebar, a big C-clamp, a pipe, and some railroad spikes, and then the arrow. Arrowhead, more railroad spikes. Even the bike rack out front. And the welcome sign up tight against the building. Across the street from the restaurant, across Michigan Avenue, is a uh, building made out of intermodal containers. Not sure what it's used for. But it looks like it's not finished. There's a picture off to the right looks like it's going to be an apartment building all along Michigan Avenue here they have these historic district Corktown signs since 1834 and you can see that they're lined all the way up and down the street next to the station they have a brick road hasn't been paved over yet and that mural depicting all different things in Detroit. What's left of the uh, train bridge. And the station.
that makes sense. I mean, they might sell to work, I guess. Inside the historic station. about the actual renovations. was the uh, main entrance lobby and if you can see out the window there the curved window the office building towers behind it during its heyday that office building was never 100% filled the inside of the large windows those big huge pillars Even the floor has been refinished, refurbished. It's beautiful. This being the last weekend, the station is open to the public to see. And here in the middle, they have pictures of the renovation. Now what I remember as a kid was coming through those doors, walking into the station, and down the big hallway towards the trains. When I was a kid, this was cavernous, it was huge. One of the things I did go was to one of the last times Amtrak stopped here. And the station was pretty much run down. It didn't look anything like this. It looked like an abandoned building you were walking through. And now it's absolutely beautiful. Throughout the station are these placards which tell you about the restoration. 
This is about the uh, 25,000 square feet of marble on the station's ground floor. Hopefully you can read that. This was dated June 6, 2024 by Bill Ford. About how Ford Motor Company restored the beautiful station. And as you overlook this beautiful Grand Hall, here's a photograph of what it looked like before the restoration. The mess, that floor, that now looks like this. In the lobby, these were ticket booths. Now just made look like windows, and they have a shadow box behind them with posters in it. And off in one of the wings is a little museum piece, the story of the station. Quite a few exhibits. to see with all the glare but this is talking about how they uh, restored the grand hall ceiling and those tiles and how they figured out where they went in a diagram like this absolutely amazing but in a glass case is one of those tiles. More pictures of what was the station before it fell into terrible disrepair. rusty old luggage carrier. Interesting about some of the iconic graffiti and how they tried to preserve some of it. like on the sides of train cars. One has to ask, is graffiti destruction or is it art? Look at this, I think it's art. There's some of the plaster walls they tried to preserve. the items that they found was a journal of lost items from the trains. Hard to believe they would need a full journal for that, but obviously they filled it up. The story of the carriage house clock. house entrance and right up there is where the clock will be once it's put back.
information about the Grand Chandeliers and the Grand Hall. of how they recreated some of this artwork from the past. In the uh, ticket booths that we saw, the ticket lobby, like when Ford purchased the building. And the remaining part of the clock. We're calling this the poster room, a trip through a culture. Since the restoration said they had to bring the staircases up to code, this is the only original staircase left in the building. And it won't be used, but you can see how they restored here. And you can kind of look up into some storage room. And in the back here, shows you what the tiles look like originally. It's graffiti on it. All the weather beating down on it. So interesting part of the building. In this restored room, the fox hats at the top of the columns there. Set up a bunch of pictures of people who have a story to tell about this station, including as we started on Bill Ford. Well, I would personally thank for restoring this beautiful building. This is the last overview of this room. This was the cafeteria. This Lego train station was built by Chris Leach, a member of the Michigan Lego Users Group. I'm trying to get out of your picture. And one of the things I for is model I don't know anywhere else in the model club.
picture of what it looked like full of graffiti and rotting away to what it looks like today. There's the clock, which was on top of the ticketing offices. The poster room that we looked at from the other side is where the ticketing office was. There's more windows here. There's windows on the back side. There's windows on the front that we already saw. We're back in the poster room. There's a picture of the train station. A schematic of what it was in its heyday. Here's a schematic of the ground floor of the train station. graffiti what the building looked like and on the other side left the uh, inside tour we're going to take a quick look at the outside of the building again there are still hundreds of people who are coming in to visit and we believe this is the last weekend that it's open until they reopen it once there's shops inside and restaurants we'll come back when that occurs the people waiting to get in this beautiful train station you can see some of the elaborate work on the columns and the peaks I'd say you couldn't make a building like this today but I'm amazed that you could restore this building once again I thank Bill Ford for his vision in recreating this beautiful building and maintaining its value, giving it some new worth. So thanks again. And I thank you for coming along in this guest adventure where everyone's a guest, including me. We'll see you on the next video.